Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستقل الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so inshallah we reach the end of uh, the explanation of the first two lessons in regards to the Arabic that's been translated. And inshallah we'll finish that today. And so we'll continue from uh, where we left off last week. And that was where the red highlighted text is. And the discussion, the lesson was about the greatest nullifier of Islam, which is shirk. And the Shaykh Hafidullah was explaining the works of the original author Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, Rahmahullah. And uh, we reached this part of the explanation. So, inshallah, we'll continue from here. So, the Shaykh he mentions part of the Quran ayah where it says, وَمَأْوَاهُ يَعْنِي and their abode or his abode. And the Shaykh he says, meaning. The living place or resting place or destination where that person will be forever, eternally. And that is in reference to the hellfire. That the people who commit shirk, who, who die as disbelievers, then their ultimate abode or resting place will be the hellfire. And then the shaykh continues and he says, Bima Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fima min al iqab فيها من الإقاب العليم والنكال الشديد. and then the sheikh says as which has been explained with regards to what will be found within hellfire, punishments, painful punishments and torment and severe torment etc. so the sheikh he continues he says اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أعذنا من النار اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة يا حي قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام ربنا لا تزن قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب. So then the sheikh, in reference to what was mentioned of the punishments of the hellfire, then the sheikh he makes a supplication to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And he says, Oh Allah. Save us and protect us from the hellfire and his punishments. Oh Allah, we ask you for Jannah to grant us Jannah. Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, Ya Dal Jalali Wal Ikram. And then the the dua within the Quran itself. Rabbana la tu la tu zik qulubana and بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب. Well known dua. So the Sheikh he continues and he says, "Qala wa ma wa hunnar wa ma li zalimina min ansar." He quotes the ayah, and this is from. Let me see. Pull this up from the translation of the meanings. This is from Surah Al-Fatir, I believe. Let me just check. And the meaning وَمَا وَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِظَالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ i.e. that the ظالم they won't find a helper and the ظالم here is in reference to not the, the oppressor as in oppression but the oppression of shirk itself the shirk, the shirk that they commit and they won't find anyone to help them nor protect them nor save them from the punishment of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala if somebody can double check uh, the reference to uh, the ayah, I don't think it's Surah Al-Fatih. I can't find it in the in my indexes. So just have a look. 
it's one we went through, I think, in the last two lessons, three lessons. It's towards the end of the ayah. It may be from Surah Nisa, I believe now. If I'm, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So um, the Shaykh continues. He says, وَمَا لِظَالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ and he says that the meaning, he says, Wal murad bi huna al mushrikin. As I mentioned, the Sheikh says the meaning of Zalimin in this ayah is in reference to the polytheists, the one who are committing shirk, the, the, the disbelievers, the one who commit shirk. The Sheikh says, Mithlu ma dakarna fil ayat al karima alati fi surat al fatir. Al murad bi zulm huna al kufr billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala al naqil min al milla. Al Murad al Ishraq Bilaya Zawajir. So then the Shaykh says, also in this, he says in the ayah, uh, in the noble ayah, uh, which is from, uh, which is in Surah to Fatir, he says that the purpose or the meaning of Zulm here is uh, disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the disbelief which takes you out of the fold of Al Islam. Ayy Shirk here. And he mentions a shirk billah, shirk billah azawajal. Yeah, committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then, the shaykh continues and he says, لِأَنَّ ظُلْمْ يُطْلَقْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ تَارَةً وَيُرَادْ بِهِ الشِّرْكِ وَيُطْلَقْ تَارَةً وَيُرَادْ بِهِ ظُلْمْ ظُلْمَ النَّفْسِ فِي مَا دُونَ الشِّرْكِ So the shaykh helps us here and in understanding. Um, and he says, with regards to the word ظُلْم, Oppression, he says, sometimes depending on the context of what we're reading within the Quran, it is in reference to shirk, polytheism, and in 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 another context, depending on where we're reading and the context of what we're reading within the Quran or from the Quran, then zulm can also mean uh, oppressing oneself, i.e., committing sins. You committing sins yourself, that's oppressing your own self, yeah, or your own soul. So then the Shaykh continues, he says, فَمِنْ أَمْثِلَةِ إِطْلَاقِ الظُّلْمِ وَإِرَادَةِ الشِّرْقِ قَوْلُهُ هُنَا وَمَا لِظَالِمِنَّ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ وَقَوْلُهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ وَقَوْلُهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ وَنَذَائِرُ ذَلِكَ كَثِيرٌ So then the Shaykh brings uh, some examples of the first meaning where, uh, where ظلم is in reference to Shirk or polytheism. Then the Sheikh mentions an ayah that we already read and a couple that I believe we all re- uh, have read in previous lessons. So the first of them, وَمَا لِلْظَالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And the next one, وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ And the kafirun, the disbelievers, they are the ظَالِمُونَ أي the ones who commit shirk and polytheism. وَقَوْلُهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ uh, لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Indeed, shirk, polytheism, uh, polytheism is a great oppression. Yeah? La Dulmun Adim. In reference to shirk. And the Shaykh says the examples of this are many within the Quran. But these are just a few that the Shaykh has uh, acquainted us with. So then the Shaykh moves on and he says, Wataratan Yutlaku Dulm, wa Yuradu bihi Dulmun Nafsi, Pima Maduna Shirk, Kama Kala Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. ثم أورثنا الكتاب الذي نصطفينا من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله ذلك هو الفضل الكبير جنة عدن يدخلونها And that's from Surah Fatir verse 32-33 So the Sheikh says And on the other hand The other meaning that ظلم can come with In terms of the context as the Sheikh mentioned earlier, it can also mean um, oppressing oneself, i.e. committing sins, doing sins and oppressing your soul uh, via those sins that you commit. Uh, that which is not obviously shirk. And the Sheikh mentions the ayah that we just read, the two ayahs, and if we go to Surah to fatir we shall see the translation of those, the meanings in English. So let's go there. Verse 32 to 30. Three. Then we gave the book, the Quran, for inheritance to such of our slaves whom we chose, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then of them are some who wrong their own selves, and of them are some who follow a middle course, and of them are some who are by Allah's leave foremost in good deeds. That inheritance of the Quran that is indeed a great grace. 
Eden, paradise, everlasting gardens will they enter. Yeah, and the, uh, that's the first part of the second ayah, what the Sheikh mentioned. So the Sheikh, he says, he breaks this down for us. He says, Allah's speech, yadkhulunaha, they will enter it, i.e. paradise. He says, who are they? He says, this ha, yadkhulunaha, or this wow that comes within the verse, who is it referring to and who does it return to? And then the Sheikh says, Yadkhulunaha. He says, Tashmal man. Who does it cover? Who, who, who does it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it for? So the Sheikh says, For minhum zalimun ni nafsihi wa minhum muqtasidun wa minhum sabiqun bil khayrat. Thumma qala jannatu adnin yadkhulunaha. Kulluhum hau ba'duhum. Kulluhum. Hatta zaliman ni nafsihi. كلهم يدخلون يدخلون الجنة فكيف يوفق بين هذا وبين قوله في الآية السابقة وما لظالمين من أنصار. So the Sheikh he says here, and we pay attention here to this. He says, so those three groups of people are mentioned: the one who oppresses himself, the one who takes the middle path, the one who is economical. He does what Allah has advised him, has commanded him, sorry, to do. And he stays away from that which Allah has prohibited him from. He doesn't do anything extra from the nawafil. He doesn't do any extra deeds on top of what Allah has made obligatory upon him. of To follow those commandments and to stay away from those prohibitions. That's the muqtasid, yeah? And then there's the final group of people who are mentioned. Um, uh, here, sabiqun wa minhum sabiqun bil khayrat. Those who do all that which the previous one does. As in doing all the faraid, all that was obligated upon the person to do, and they go the extra mile. They do the nawafil, they do the all kinds of extra good deeds, and they put them forth for Allah's sake to gain Allah's reward. So then the Sheikh says, with regards to this ayah, Jannatu Adnin Yadkhulunaha, they enter the, uh, the gardens of paradise, or Eden, paradise, they enter it. He says, is that all of those three groups of people, or is it some of them? And the Sheikh says, it's all of them. He says, even to the point of the one who oppresses himself, commits sins. That's not shirk, of course. He says, all of them will enter Jannah. So the Sheikh says, so how do we reconcile this ayah, or these two ayahs, and the previous ayah that was read, وَمَا لِظَالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ And there is no helper for the, 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 the oppressors, the ones who oppress themselves. The Sheikh, he goes on to say, he says, المراد هناك ظلم ظلم الشرك والمراد بالظلم هنا في هذه الآية ظلم الذي دون شرك. So the Sheikh says, how do we answer that question? And he, meant, he answered it earlier. He mentions again for our reference that the ظلم um, in this the the last ayah that we just mentioned وما لظالم من من أنصار, which was also mentioned in the previous paragraphs, that's to do with shirk, as the Sheikh mentioned. But this ayah, the two ayahs that we read from Surah Al-Fatir, that mentions the three categories of people. That's to do with uh, that which is other than shirk. Yeah, so sins are being committed which are other than shirk. Still oppression, but other than shirk. And this is what the Sheikh mentioned here. And then he says, أي فمنهم ظالم لنفسه أي بذنوب المعاصي التي هي دون شرك لأن السياق من أول الآية في حق المسلمين الذين ورثوا الكتاب ليس في حق الكفار so then the Sheikh says here that this, this ayah when he mentions these groups of people and the first of them is the one who oppresses himself i.e. Uh, commits sins and uh, misdeeds etc that is other than shirk then the Sheikh says that this, these two ayahs and this ayah it's in reference to and in, within context with regards to the, the rights of the Muslims the Muslims they're in the state of Islam the Muslims yeah, who have inherited the kitab, yeah, as in the Quran, the, the religion, the deen. And it isn't in, in it would, it, and, it, and it isn't for, this ayah isn't for the disbelievers. So then the Sheikh mentions the next ayah, he says, الْكِتَابَ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ إِبَادِنَا فَوَصَفَهُمُ اللَّهِ بِالْمُصْطَفَيْنَ وَوَصَفَهُمْ بِأَنَّهُمْ إِبَادِهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى وَذَكْرَهُمْ أَقْسَامٌ ثَلَاثَةَ الظَّالِمْ لِنَفْسِهِ وَالْمُقْتَصِدْ وَسَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ وَسَابِقُوا بِالْخَيْرَاتِ كُلُّ هَؤُلَا مُسْلِمُونَ السَّابِقُ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ الَّذِي فَعَلَ الْوَاجِبَاتِ وَتَرَكَ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ وَنَافَسَ فِي فِي الرَّغَائِبِ وَالْمُسْتَحَبَّاتِ وَالْمُقْتَصِدِ So let's just stop there for a second. So 
The Sheikh mentions this ayah, Thumma awrathna al-kitab al-ladhina stafayna min ibadina. And he says this is in reference to uh, the Muslims. It's in reference to the Muslims. And this uh, the ayah from Surah Al-Fatih that we read is in reference to the Muslims. And then the Sheikh breaks down in more detail these three categories of people. Adhalimun li nafsihi wal muqtasid wa sabiqu bil khayrat. And he says all of these, they are all of these, these three categories, they are Muslims. They're all Muslims. So the Sheikh says, "As-sabiq bil khayrat." He says, "Allah di faal al-wajibat wa tarak al-muharramat wa nafasa fi al-raqib wa al-mustahabat." He says, "So who is the one? Who are the ones who are described as as-sabiq bil khayrat? The ones who who put forth, yeah, and strive." He says, "He says those are the ones who did all the obligations." That Allah commanded them with They carried out all the obligations That Allah commanded them with And they left all the haram And all the prohibitory acts That Allah uh, prohibited them from And also on top of that They um, uh, You know strive They compete In all the Good kind of optional deeds And recommended acts That's Asabiku bil khayrat. Then the Sheikh says, and the muqtasid. So who's the muqtasid? He says, wal muqtasid. Alladhi iqtasara ala fi'l al-wajibat wa tarak al-muharramat. So then he says, al muqtasid. And al muqtasid can also be translated as somebody who's economical. Economical. Or middle, in the middle. Or economical. And the Sheikh says, what does it mean here? He says, it means the one who carried out all the obligatory acts that Allah commanded him to carry out and left off all the prohibitions that Allah prohibited him from. He didn't do anything extra like this Asabiq Bil Khayrat. He just did the minimum was required. And that is the Muqtasid. And then the Sheikh says, Who is who is in this category and what do, what does it mean to be in this category? He says, Allah التي دون شرك بالله جميع هؤلاء قال الله عنهم جنات عدن يدخلونها. so he goes on to explain how the Allah says والظالم لنفسه the one who oppresses himself i.e. he does he falls into he perpetrates sins he falls into sins he commits sins which are other than shirk which are other than shirk and then the sheikh says that all of these Allah said about them that they will enter, as, as, as in the ayah that we read earlier, that they will enter paradise. And the Sheikh, he continues to explain away. He says, وَلِهَذَا بَعْضُ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ فِي كُتُبِ التَّفْسِيرِ يُعَظِّمُونَ شَأْنَ هَذِهِ الْوَاوْ فِي قَوْلِهِ جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ يَدْخُلُونَهَا وَيُفَخِّمُونَ أَمْرَهَا لِأَلْنَهَا رَحْمَةً من الله سبحانه وتعالى وفضل شمل الظلم الظالم لنفسه قال جنات عدن يدخلونها أي بما فيهم الظالم لنفسه. so then the sheikh says that that some of the uh, people of knowledge in their books of exegesis tafsir of the Quran they glorified and they magnified the place of the letter wow in this ayah i.e going back to the ayah فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَسِدٌ وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ the wa, as you hear the wa, and 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 they magnified they magnified that and they put emphasis on that because all those they enter Jannah. And so the Sheikh says, even the one who oppressed himself and did sins that is other than Shirk, he will go into paradise. Then the Sheikh will explain this in more detail, particularly that, that part. So the Sheikh he continues, he says, Lakin Kama Bayan al Ulama Rahimahullah. رحمهم الله السابق بالخيرات والمقتصد كلاهما يدخل الجنة ب 
بدون حساب ولا عذاب واما الظالم لنفسه فهو يدخل الجنه لكن قد يمر قبل ذلك بمرحله بمرحله تطهير في نار جهنم ولهذا دخوله ولهذا دخوله الجنه وشمول الايه له في قوله جنات عدن يدخلونها لا يلزم منه ان يكون هذا الدخول دخولا اوليا مباشره بل قد يمر قبل ذلك بمرحله بمرحله التعذيب او مرحله تطهير so then the sheikh explains an important part that might crop him to our minds at the moment and he says from what we've read so far he says however as the scholars may allah have mercy upon them have mentioned and clarified the sabiq bil khairat and the muqtasid both of them those two categories those people who fall in those two categories they will enter paradise without being a, uh, without being held to account nor will they be punished they'll go straight to they'll go straight to paradise as for the one who committed sins that's other than shirk the zalim li nafsihi he will enter paradise however before that there will be a period of purification in the hellfire and the sheikh says and this is why him entering jannah it, uh, that entering of that person the, this zalim li nafsihi it covers in the ayah that we already read it covers this person as well jannah tu adnin yadkhulunaha and the sheikh says finally in this final sentence in this paragraph he goes on to say it does it's not stipulated for the zalim li nafsihi and that he enters the hellfire straight away and stays there and that's it but rather the reason for entering the hellfire is to serve that punishment for what he did and as a means of purification due to the effects of those sins and once the person is purified then he'll be he'll be able to enter paradise so then the sheikh goes on to say in the final paragraph here ومما يدل لذلك ايضا انك اذا قرات سياق الايات بعد هذه القسمه الثلاثيه وقول الله فيهم جنات عدن يدخلونها بعد بعدها بقليل قال والذين كفروا لهم نار جهنم لا يقضى عليهم فيموتوا ولا يخفف عنهم من عذابها كذلك نجزي كل كفور وهم يسترخون فيها ربنا أخرجنا نعمل صالحا غير الذي كنا نعمل أولم نعمركم ما يتذكر فيه من تذكر وجاءكم النذير فذوقوا فما للظالمين من نصير قوله للظالمين هنا يختلف عن قوله فمنهم ظالم لنفسه هنا قوله فما للظالمين أي المشركين الكفار وهناك قوله فمنهم ظالم لنفسه أي بذنوب المعاصي التي uh doing a shirk so then the sheikh he says in this final par- paragraph he goes on to say and from what demonstrated and what seen also is that uh, uh from what we've read so far he says if you read the context of these verses the context of these verses uh the verses that come uh slight a little bit after these uh, uh the two verses that we've read from surah to fatir with regards to those three type groups of muslims um that they will enter paradise then a, a few verses later um we see this ayah walladhina kafaru lahum naru jahannam to the end of this ayah and that's verse 36 and 37 and if we look at the meanings of that then we'll see what uh, allah mentions he says but those who disbelieve in the oneness of allah islamic monotheism for them will be the fire of hell neither it will have a complete killing effect on them so that they die nor shall its torment be lightened for them thus do we require every disbeliever therein they will cry our lord bring us out we shall do righteous good deeds not the evil deeds that we used to do and allah will reply to them 
did we not give you lives long enough so that whosoever would receive admonition could receive it? And the warner came to you, so taste you the evil of your deeds. For the Dhali moon, i.e. polytheists and wrongdoers, etc., there is no helper. And we read that, I think, two lessons ago, previous lesson and the week before that. The week before and a couple of weeks ago, this ayah. And the Sheikh then contrasts and compares again, just to remind us, that uh, the ayah with regards to mentioning of those three groups of people that will enter paradise, that's in, uh, is, to the, is to do with the right of the Muslims. The Muslims. Uh, and the dhulm, a dhalim li nafsihi, is the, it's in reference to, it's not in reference to shirk, but it's in reference to uh, the sins that the person commit as a Muslim, um, other than shirk. And this ayah that we just read, that's a few verses after the, that ayah that we just mentioned, then this one that I read here, to the end of the ayah, then this is with regard to the kufar, the ones who die upon disbelief and committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's where uh, where Allah says, فَمَا لِلْظَالِمِينَ The ظالم لِلْظَالِمِينَ here, it's in reference to the shirk. And as mentioned also in the uh, the translation of the meanings that we just read a moment ago. So just important to uh, differentiate between uh, the two uh, so we don't get confused and we can take the correct understanding, uh, inshallah. And so the shaykh, he finishes there and he says, وَنُوَاصِلَ الْحَدِيثَ غَدًا إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدِ So then the Shaykh says that the, the lesson will continue. So inshallah for us, uh, because we're following our own uh, schedule, that'll be next Friday, inshallah, 8 o'clock. So see you then, bidnay ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.